Okay, here are a couple of the highlights from this first lab. Um, what I would recommend first and foremost is take as much time as you can to get comfortable with the software in this first week. It's these lab assignments um, are going to transition from making you familiar with concepts, tools, and the ability of the software and the difference between the two different softwares that we're going to be using, Arc Pro and Arc Map. Um, and then they're going to transition into case studies where you're actually just solving problems using the tools. Um, the most successful students and the ones that enjoy GIS the most <laughs> and get uh, through the semester with smiles on their faces are the ones that take the time at the beginning to not just get the work done, but to really kind of understand the, the goal of the lab. And this first one, the goal is to just get you comfortable, figure out what the tools do, what, what happens if I press this button, what's underneath each one of these tabs, like what does this mean? So work through the lab and really pay attention to what we're trying to convey to you. Um, for this first week, it has a lot to do with data management, getting comfortable downloading your files and getting stuff integrated into ARC Pro, um, understanding how to make folder connections, playing around with symbology. Here's the table of contents, and we've got the rivers data in here. Um, they're drawing as red. They look like blood vessels. That's disgusting. It's not intuitive for rivers, so let's figure out how to change it, you know? Click on it, and oh, here's some, here's some stuff. Maybe these aren't perfect for rivers. Maybe we could type in river. Um, the instructions don't tell you how to do this, so just play around with it. Um, we show you another way to, um, to change your symbology. But there are better ways to do it. There's usually about 10 different ways to do anything you want in ARC. Um, it's a really powerful software package. Here you can see that it automatically labeled everything for us. How awesome is that? Yeah, that's pretty slick. Okay, so uh, play around with the symbology, experiment a little bit, um, add new data. We um, are gonna have you add a bunch of data sets, but play around with it and add some new stuff. Look what happens if you drop it here underneath the map. The topographic is this base map. So we just added data, but you don't see anything. Well, it's drawing underneath this um, green base map. So if I draw it up here on top of the rivers, whoa, there's all my cities. What happens if I click on a dot? Oh, wow, it tells me what city it is and the population. Where is that coming from? Well, if you look here, there's an attribute table. Attributes are the information associated with the data. And if you look, um, you can see that there's a whole table. We've got names. These are all the city names, what county it's in, the population range, the actual population. 9999 negative is a placeholder for no data. So just mess around with this. Get used to panning. Get used to zooming. Um, figure out how to use your tools. Uh, and then the last thing I want to show you um, before you just get unleashed onto this is that you've got map tabs up here. So I can insert and create a new map. And now I have a new one that has an independent scale. And I could add different data. Let's add the state capitals. Um, you can drag, you drag, drag it over to the table of contents, or you can drop it right on the map. So these are just the capitals, and then we have the cities as a different data set. So I've got two different maps now displaying different data at different scales. That's, that's kind of neat. If you want to make a formal map, something that has a title um, and a scale bar and, and is better for printing and presentation, you need, under the Insert tab, to add a new layout. Here it gives you the option to pick from default paper sizes and papers in uh, air quotes because it's the printed size. Um, if you're displaying it on um, you know, a PowerPoint slide or if it's going to be on a, a video presentation or something, you can also do a custom page size. But basically we just start with 8.5 by 11 uh, landscape or portrait, or you could do a custom page size and make it 11 by 11 so you have a square. There are different options in here, but for now, let's just stick with uh, landscape. So it brings in my page here. Um, and then we're going to insert a frame for our maps. So this set up the layout. 
and then we're going to insert a map frame. And if you click on this, notice these are my two different maps, the one with all the cities and the one with just the state capitals. So if I click on this, I have to draw a location for it. And there's all my cities. And then let's add another map frame and we'll reference the other one. And pop that in there, approximate the size. So the two different scales, the two different data sets. This is how you set up a map. Then using the insert, and I'll walk you through this in the instructions, you can add things like titles, text, um, scale bars, etc. And you could place those things here. It's the same idea where you have to draw a frame for it. You have to click on the thing that you want and then create a space for it. Um, let's, let's go through one last thing, getting rid of this text. This is a, a kind of a sketchy map that isn't um, um, very beautiful right now because it's not scaled appropriately and it's kind of shifted off to the side, but notice these big, ugly, interactive data credits. ARC um, puts these on here automatically, and I want you to get into the habit of taking them off and including this information in um, text credits, or sorry, data credits that you create yourself. So you could say data courtesy USGS, um, wherever this data came from, and you find that in the instructions. I provide the sources for all the data that we give you every week. And then you could include ESRI for the base map. So instead of having this huge block of text that takes up a quarter of your page or your map, you're going to just include it in your own handwritten data credits, hand typed. Okay, so to get rid of these, you go up to, on the Insert tab, Dynamic Text, and then scroll down until you see Service Layer Credits. And this, you'll be able to do this in your sleep by week three. When you do Service Layer Credits, again, you have to create a space for them, but it pulls them off the map. And then what I usually do is just drag these off the page so you can't see them anymore. So when you export this paper to PDF, these don't show up. The other thing that you can do here is, well, okay, that got into the weeds too much, so I'm just going to stop there. <laughs> I would recommend dragging these off the page and just don't show them. But what you'll do is you'll create a text block that says data credits, um, wherever you get this data from, and then um, Esri for the base map. And just to show you, these are the instructions here. And if we scroll down to the data, you can see nationalatlas.gov, mapcruising.com, nationalatlas.gov. These are the data sources, the data credits. So you can always find them in the instructions. Okay, go, play, experiment, have fun, make us a great map, and get comfortable with the software. Thanks.